Hello, my name is Miran, and I'm the owner of Mama Jun Armenian Pizzeria out in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And today, I'm going to show you how to make traditional mantir. So let's just dive right into it, why don't we? First thing we're going to do is we're going to make our dough. And uh, to make the dough, it's very simple. Four ingredients. And with the use of our KitchenAid mixer, if you don't have a mixer, you could always do it by hand. It's going to take a little longer, but get strong. The recipe is as follows. You'll need one kilo of all-purpose flour, half a tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon of olive oil, and about 500 to 550 ml of lukewarm water. So, we'll put the salt in the water, the oil. I like to, I like to mix the, those three ingredients together before I add the flour to make sure that everything is, the salt is dissolved and you get an even distribution. So. It's always a good idea to have a little bit extra water on hand if the dough you see it's depending on the temperature dough can be tight it could be loose so you might need some extra flour if the dough is too um, sticky and if the dough is too hard just add a little bit of extra water right now we look okay so while that's happening we're gonna get our meat mixture ready and uh, for one kilo of ground beef, I like to use 80-20, 80 meat, 20 fat. I usually um, use one large Spanish onion, cut up into as little dice as you can. Put that in the bowl. Half a tablespoon of black pepper, one tablespoon salt, half a tablespoon of Aleppo pepper, which you can get at any Middle Eastern store. If you can't find Aleppo pepper, you could always use um, paprika. So what I like to do is I like to mix these ingredients together before adding the meat to make sure that everything is mixed in nice kind of like that and then we'll add the meat you got to get your hands in there you could always do this the day before and let it sit overnight same with the dough. So if time is an issue, which, when is it not? This way you could, you could do a little bit of prep ahead of time and save a little bit of, of time the day you're gonna make it. This recipe is a, a simple recipe and it's an old recipe. It was my grandmother's recipe. So, as you notice, there's not that many ingredients. You never really need that many ingredients to have something be delicious. So, that's going to look a little something like that. I'm going to wash my hands. This machine has seen its fair share of uh, dough mixing. Th this right here is a perfect dough. It's not, it's not dry, it's not wet, it's, it's just perfect. Now, so you, you'll be able to make your 
balls and then roll it out very easily. Had it been, uh, you had too much flour and the dough is just not coming together like this, for example, if the dough is, you know, like, it just doesn't seem like this, a much smoother dough, what you would do is you would just add a bit of water to that. So, and when you add water, it'll take a little bit of time for it to, um, to mix in because it's already kind of formed. So by the time everything gets absorbed again, it'll look something like this, but eventually it will come together. That's the thing with dough. There's recipes, but temperature, humidity, all these things always play a factor in dough. So that's why you got to always have a little bit of water or a little bit of flour on hand to um, make up and uh, fix, fix it. So now we added a bit of water and our dough is nice and soft, which is what we want. So these, you put them down, there's no rules, you can make the balls about the size of a baseball I guess, and just let them rest. Those are done like that. I like to do a little cross on my doughs, I find. They always come out a little bit nicer. We'll start off with one dough. Flour the surface. Why do you cover the dough? Uh, we cover the dough so that um, when you leave dough in open air, it, ten it tends to dry out. So that's why we cover. Always, when you're rolling, you always start from the middle out. I like to do it like in, a, in an oval. I try to get it to become like a, as rectangle as possible. If that happens, you just add a little bit more flour. And we want to try and roll this out till it's about a millimeter to two millimeters in thickness. And I like to flip it every once in a while and add a little bit more flour. Yeah, we can go a little bit more. So a little bit a little bit more than that. Right there we're at about two, three millimeters. We want to go thinner. The thinner you go, the less dough you eat. <laughs> right about there. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. With the use of a pizza cutter, uh, we're going to make some strips about um, an inch and a half wide. So we'll go ahead and do that. About that much. There's no real rules. And... One like that, and then we want them to be in squares, so we're going to do the same thing going the other way. All these little ones I like to get rid of because they're not really going to work out. And then we're going to start putting the meat on there. Uh, we got a little tray ready to receive the delicious mante on um, with the parchment paper on it. So you want to put a little ball like that right in the middle. I guess that would be about a centimeter or so in size. This is the, this is why so many people like to order Manta and not make it at home, but it's so fun to do it at home. I like to do it with my kids. It gives them something to do. And you keep the tradition alive like this. So there we go. 
that. Oh. Where did you learn to make manta? So, <laughs> I learned how to eat manta <laughs> when I was a little boy because what the the way what I'm told is I never used to eat food, and the only way I would eat my mom would make me manta. Uh, in the shape, you, you know how it's shaped like a boat, traditionally. I, I in the store, don't make them that way. I make them into little pouches because I feel like the meat uh, doesn't dry out that way. But um, uh, she would make it into little boats and she would trick me into eating them. And that's how I would, that's how I would eat manta. And then for many years, I didn't when I got older. And then when I opened up my shop uh, where I make lahmacun, which is another traditional Armenian food, uh, everybody would come and ask me for manta. So I decided to start making it. A lot of a lot of um, non-Armenians uh, have have heard about it through social media and whatnot, and it's pretty cool because now. Um, you know, people from all over Ontario come here to grab bags of manta and take it home and feed it to their families. It's really sweet. Yeah. When you're making these mantas, you grab it in your hand and you go corner to corner and then corner to corner and you make a nice little pouch and you just drop them into the tray. So, corner to corner, corner to corner, and you just give it a pinch and it'll hold. And then you just continue doing that. You could do your first one off of the table, then once you get it in your hand, you just, you just pinch them together. So, again, corner to corner, corner to corner, and there you have it. And sometimes if the dough is a bit sticky, it'll, you know, you'll have to maneuver it there out. But there's no, you can't really go wrong with this. They're always going to come out perfect like that. And if, if ever the dough is too small, it's dough. So you can always, you know, you can pull it. If there's no, you can't go wrong with this. So you just pull it to what you need, pull it, and then just give it a squeeze at the top. And put it on your tray. We mix one kilo of meat, which is approximately two pounds. Uh, if you weigh in also the dough, when you finish making all of the meat into little uh, pockets like this, you will end up with about three and a half to four pounds of finished product, which will easily feed five to eight. And you'll notice that when you start getting the hang of this, you get faster and faster, and if you're doing it with somebody else, it's very fun to do a competition, and you'll notice that uh, the competitive spirit in you will come out. And next thing you know, it'll be a competition, and before you know it, you'll be eating. And kids love to do this too. If you put, if you have kids that have that don't know what to do, and you want to get them off their devices. Guess what? Make them make you manta. That one was a little bit tricky. Boom. Sometimes they come out ugly like this, but they're still delicious when you eat them. So now that you have all your manta on your parchment paper, all ready to go, nice and beautiful, we're going to put it in the oven at 350 degrees, and it usually takes about 30 minutes. Uh, what I like to do is I like to uh, open the door of the oven just to uh, make sure that it, nothing is burning, flip the tray and uh, get, take a look and see where it's at because 30 minutes could be 35, it could be 25, you never know. Everyone has different ovens. So we are going to put it in at 350 in the oven. So it's been about 15 minutes. We're going to do a little check on our manta and see where we're at. So 
They're starting to get nice and brown, which is what we want. We want that crispiness. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it back in the oven for about 10 more minutes and let it cool down. All right, guys, so the 30 minutes is up. Let's look at our finished product. Oh, yeah. Wonderful, delicious, nice and crispy edges. And then the insides. Ooh, that's hot. It'll be nice and soft. I'm going to go a little for... Oh, that's hot. I'm going to show you how to make a really easy um, tomato sauce. The way we serve it at Mama June is a red sauce. So we make our own uh, chicken stock, which I really recommend. If you're going to go through the trouble of doing that, make a chicken stock. All you need is uh, carrot, onion, celery, chicken bones. You could use chicken legs. Put it in a pot. Um, it'll take about two hours, but it'll really be worth it. So this is about one liter of chicken stock. To that, I add... Uh, two heaping tablespoons of tomato paste. Salt and pepper is going to be the taste. A little bit of pepper. Give it a little tasty poo. If you want to go one step further and make this really s silky smooth, uh, you could add a nice nub of butter here and uh, it'll bring out all the flavor. Butter brings a lot of flavor to food. So let's see. Perfect. So that's ready to go. And now we're going to plate. And uh, to that, I will add a nice course. That would be about I would say that would be about a portion right there. So you ladle in a little bit of that tomato sauce, not too much. It's not a soup. And then we'll go in there with a nice heaping tablespoon of full fat yogurt. And some sumac on the top. I'd like to go on the edges just to make it look a little bit artsy. And then you're ready to eat. So, Manta, enjoy. Welcome to Learn the Dish. My name is Miran. My name is Ani. My name is Sean. The best way to get to know a people is through their food. Today I'm going to show you how to make tabule. I'm going to show you how to make mante. One of our specialties here is, uh, is Armenian coffee. We're building a community to share the traditional dishes just like your grandma used to make. Everybody would come and ask me for mante. Always super proud to serve here. Come with us. Share your recipes too. And maybe learn the dish. Maria Enjoy. There you go.